Hey, it's Lucky. Today we're making a lamp. Why? I don't know. But it's definitely not because I'm a moth. I know there have been some arguments made recently, some talk online. I've seen a lot of accusations, but uh, yeah. This is me officially stating I'm not a moth. I know coming out of a four month not posting streak and uh, coming in with some lamp content might seem as suspicious to some, but it's just because I know a big part of my viewership uh, are moths. And so, uh, yeah, there's nothing wrong with being a moth. I just want to come out and say that, that I'm not, I'm not a, an, uh, an insect, a moth. So let's jump into it. We're going to go into Blender to do the modeling and the texture painting, and then export the model over to Godot to do the logic for the lamp. And we're going to add a custom shader for the flame. The whole thing took about four hours. So it's a smaller project, but there's still a lot to learn here. I'm going to be talking about my techniques for modeling and painting and coding. So let's get started. First thing I did for this project, and coincidentally, the first thing I do uh, most days is open up Pinterest and look for some images of vintage lamps. I really wanted to do this hurricane lamp. I think they have a nice mechanism and they're very beautiful. Now let's open up Blender and get started. The first technique I want to showcase is the spin technique. This is where you take a single vertice and outline the shape of your object. Then go into the top view and use the spin tool to convert this path of vertices into a round object. I'll be doing this for the base, the part of the lamp that holds the fuel, the globe, which is the a glass part, and the chimney, the part on top. This technique is extremely useful for creating things that were turned out of sheet metal. We don't see it a lot these days, it was more used in the early industrial era. But things like soda cans and kitchenware are still made using this technique. Now the rest of this model is made out of bent metal. And for this we're going to use the follow curve modifier. Basically we're going to model all our metal straight and then we're going to create a curve that matches the path that the metal will take and then apply this modifier to follow that curve. Hold on, hold on, hold on. I feel like I need to explain that a little better. Uh, the curve modifier works as follows. If you have some geometry, let's just take a basic cube and let's move it up. And then you have a path or a curve. So let's add a basic path here and you can move the path to whatever you like let's make a little bend right here then you can add a modifier right here in the modifier tab go to add modifier deform curve and then select that path or curve and then select your deform axis z usually works best and now the cube will follow that path and you can see right now it's not working very well that's because the, uh, the cube is not long enough we can make it longer and you have to give it some more geometry so it can actually bend so we'll add some loop cuts to it using ctrl r and then scrolling up and then clicking as you can see right now it follows the curve you can modify that curve create organic shapes this way and this is what i use to create those curves this technique can be a little fiddly uh, you sometimes have to mess around with the parameters of the modifier, the position of the object you're trying to curve and the position of the curve. But in my experience, just setting the origin of the curve and the origin of the object to zero, then just taking the Z axis as the forward axis for the curve usually gives good results. And it's such a pain to model these organic shapes by hand. So it's really your only option. For the intake for the fuel and the little throttle knob on the side, we're just doing some basic extrusion of a cylinder. And finally, we're doing some cleanup by combining these four braces that go across the globe. And that should be the modeling all done. The next thing we're gonna do is UV unwrap the model. This means we're gonna take all the faces, lay them out flat, so we can apply an image texture to those faces. This step can be a little tedious. And to be fair, I don't have a really strong technique for doing this. I use the auto-generated UV grid as you can find in the image editor in Blender and just generate a UV grid when creating the image. And then I just mess around with all the ways you can unwrap a model. For texture painting, smart unwrapping usually works. They're not the most beautiful unwraps you'll ever see, but they do the job. Just make sure when you unwrap a model that you don't have any overlapping faces. Because if two faces uh, populate the same part of an image and you start painting, you'll be painting on two faces at the same time and it can get very confusing. The last thing we're gonna do before flying over to our drawing tablet is laying down flat colors. I'm just gonna take my mouse, paint on these textures, the base colors that I want, no detail yet, just laying down where I want to be the orange painted metal, the metallic gray metal, and the raw slash charred parts of the lamp, which uh, handle the flame and the chimney.
Now you definitely don't need a drawing tablet this big for texture painting. You can use one of those small ones, they're like 15 bucks I think. And these big ones are not as expensive as they used to be. I remember as a kid I always wanted one of those giant Wacom drawing tablets and they were like 3k at the time. But now you can get one of these X-Pen artists for like 300 bucks, 22 inch, and they're really nice. So texture painting, I always go about the process in the same way. I uh, start with the flat color, which I already have, and then I paint in the ambient light. So I go into every crease, everywhere where there would be uh, shadows, painting in a little bit of a dark color. And then I use that same color to also apply some dirt and grime. I imagine these lamps would be very oily and they would build up grime around the edges and like dripping off the sides and the fuel port and the little uh, knob. I also like to apply a big gradient to every object. So it isn't just the flat color with details. There's like a gradient in the background. And I'm starting off at the bottom darker and then moving up lighter as I go towards the top. And then this model has two types of details. I apply some dirt to the flat surfaces and scratches to the edges. So every edge that stands out that would be hit when using it. I apply this gray to show the uh, unpainted metal underneath to indicate some wear and use. And finally for the gray shiny bits, I just create this base texture of scratched metal and then go into every knob and create a little scratched outline around the side of the knob and the viewport. For these metal wires that go across, I just use that base texture. You're not going to be able to see much detail on these fin wires anyway. Alright, let's move over to Godot. Did you know Godot takes Blender files as an asset type? So you can just save your Blender project in your Godot project and it will just work as a model. It's not what we're going to do here though. We're going to export it to GLB and then import it again into Godot. This just keeps the project a little bit cleaner in my opinion and we need to do some editing of the model. And this is because opaque textures don't transfer nicely from Godot. All the other ones they transfer perfectly, but when you have a transparent texture you need to create a custom material in Godot, apply that texture and then play with the transparency settings till you get what you want. Next I want to work on the visuals of the scene. I'm going to apply a background color, add in a little table using Kenny's grid textures and play a little bit with the rendering of the scene. I'm applying some anti-aliasing and going into the world environment and tweaking the bloom, making the lamp pop more. And then I will create the opening and the closing animation for this lamp. By pushing on the little handle on the side, it works as a lever on the glass globe to open it up so you can reach under to light the lamp. Then when you release the handle, it closes back down over the light, protecting it from wind. It's a very simple animation and in Blender I already made sure that the handle uh, turns around the right point. So it actually functions like a handle, I just have to turn it on the x-axis. And I made sure that all the parts that move up when pushing the handle are connected. So I only have to animate one object, not all of them together. Coding up this lamp is that simple. I'm keeping track of two states, which is whether the lamp is open or closed and whether the lamp is lit or unlit. And then there's one float that keeps track of the intensity of the lamp. Uh, these lamps work by extending the wick. So it's an oil lamp and where the flame is, it's a little wick point. And by turning that handle, you extend it upwards, allowing for more material to burn and in turn making the lamp brighter. All I do here is check for a couple of inputs. Uh, the open lamp input checks if the lamp is not already open and then place that open animation same for the closed but in reverse. And the Godot animation player has a callback signal which fires when an animation is finished. And then I just check uh, what animation just finished. If it's the closed animation, we change the state to closed. And if it's the open animation, we change the state to open. And the logic for lighting the lamp only checks if the lamp is open. So when the lamp is open, you can ignite the lamp or extinguish the lamp. And all the extending and shortening the wick logic does is uh, change the intensity of the light object and changing the size of this flame object. And this is the final part of the project, making this flame object. It's a custom shader and I'm using a scroll displacement shader. I've talked about this before in this post-processing video, which I'll link down below. It goes into great detail about writing custom shaders. But in short, all it does is it takes this base texture of the flame and then it scrolls over this noise texture, which I generate in Godot. And using this scrolling noise texture, it warps this flame texture, creating the flame effect you see here. And that's our beautiful, beautiful lamp done. I hope you guys enjoyed this project. Uh, let me know what you think of the lamp down below. And if you want to know what I think of your lamp, just leave your window open at night. I've got a bunch of bigger projects on the way, so don't worry, I'm back to uploading. I'm, I'm sorry for disappearing again on you guys. I'm back on the grind, and I'll see you guys in the next one. Thanks for watching. Bye.